we're going to tell it we're just going to occupy a point. Okay. Same terminology, occupancy point. Mm -hmm. Everything's there. Backside to an azimuth. Yeah, but this is just, it's broadcasting. It goes into a power saving mode. Okay. So you're not going to be using this at all. Okay. So as you can see, we, we've got a horizontal and vertical angle, so we're communicating. Right. Right. So now if I head down, let's walk down to the end of the hall. 360 degree prism, yeah. yeah. So no matter where I'm walking, like I can turn like this. Okay. As long as it's got line of sight, yeah. as long as it's got line of sight, it's going to follow me. It will follow. Anyway, right. A little yellow button on top. Oh yeah, I don't know. see it turning there. See it yep. turning there now. Oh yeah, just shooting. One of the biggest challenges that people have is you can be four or five hundred meters away. And if you lose lock, you've got to walk back up and gain it. Yeah. The longest, now it's beyond spec, but the longest I've ever locked on is 537 meters. What kind of conditions yep. cause you to lose it if there's any obstruction? So car, cars that go by, like I mean, if there was a bunch of students in the hallway. Now, this has a bit of an advanced tracking feature where it'll assume, if you're moving at a constant rate of speed and you lose, like walk behind a tree, it'll assume your position. Oh, okay. Right, so it's, uh, it's got an advanced tracking algorithm in it. So how can you tell when you logged in again? It will. Yeah, well, you, you get a beep in there, right? Okay. So if I if I get out of the line, so now we're all. So you see the light flashing? Yeah. Uh -huh. So we're in again. So you save that one as Algonquin. Yep. The, uh, so as soon as it pops up, you're going to go Algonquin, my robotic, or whatever you want to call it. You can change the name of it. Hit connect. Okay. The Bluetooth is already saved in there. Select it. Okay. And you see the little green button up top. Once that's solid green, you're connected. Just topo shots. Now that I've got, I've got a backside point. I just backside it to an azimuth, so now everything's referenced to the instrument. So now we can just start shooting at point 100. So it's giving me a slope distance. Now this is where I mean. People use a bipod, whatever it may be, hold, hold a plumb. Two ways you can do it. There's a little little save button here to take your shot. So it's set to, now you can turn to your backside, measure your azimuth. So now we've just oriented ourselves back into the job. Now it's a different orientation, so the line's going to be off a little bit. But once we're there and we're set, so we can go back into the map, get into this line. Take out my line work, okay. back to real time. That's sick. Yeah. Then I got my station distance and then to and from the line. All right, and it's on real time right yep. now. So it'll give you real time. So if you did a 3D mesh for a, for a design, oh, okay. you know, yeah. you, you can get cut fill information anywhere as well. So that that's really, you know, more what we call data prep. Uh -huh. So you could do... Um, you could do a topo elevation, right, with this, bring that back in, yeah. you know, create a 3D design for it, yeah. and then go, and you could ask your your students yeah. to create stations and go, what's the cut fill okay. at that? So it teaches them about measuring in 3D, um, doing the proper steps, and setting up total stations, because if you're off by a couple millimeters, then you know your cut fill is going to be off by a couple millimeters. You can pull information out, so you can import, uh, export text files, uh, you can export into DXF, you can export into uh, AutoCAD DWG. It's 2000 format though, so when you bring it into CAD, you'll have to just remember that it's 2000 format you're importing. So the imaging station, which is a model up, 
okay. um, from that will shoot up to 20 points per second. Okay. So you can scan. We can do a, a 3D scan okay. of this entire interior, yeah. pull that into Image Master, take some photos behind it, and we'd have some point data to go along with it. Okay. And then it's an onboard software is the same so that in the event that the data collector is down or not available, you can still use the unit as a two-man unit.